let's start this thing because now you're good here. You're gone to something here. <laughs> Greetings from Podcastville. <laughs> what's happening, you bad motherfuckers? The Church of What's Happening Now is brought to you by Zip Recruiter. Listen, hiring is hard. Did you know that three out of four employers say they're having trouble fill, filling open positions? They're taking bold steps to attract talent by raising wages and increasing benefits. And even that's not working. Do me a favor. Go to ZipRecruiter. It's so effective that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. And right now, to try ZipRecruiter for free, the church family can go to ZipRecruiter.com slash church. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash church. Kick this mule. The church wants to welcome Sam Tripoli. Honor and a privilege to be What's back up, in the G saddle, Money? brother. I love you very much. I love both you guys very much. Thank you so much for having me on, dude. The love is in the air. Yeah, it is. So we, got the, we got the Lysol can because yeah, the is in the air. So, dude, somebody said if you read these uh, ingredients, man, you could find coronavirus in there. Do you know that? Did you? Like on the... On the Lysol. It's, dude, I'm telling you, I know you're going to think I'm a crazy person, brother. I don't know. There's way more to this than anybody even understands. And I think it's way deeper than just everybody. I mean, like, I'm being honest with you, man. I think it's, there's another play at work. And that's my opinion. What, what is the other play? I think that the Chinese government and neoliberals are trying to tank the U.S. economy so that they can get rid of Donald Trump out of office and that there's just a lot of stuff about this that doesn't make any sense. And it's just some weird stuff, and they're trying to get everybody to stop going to work, stop. I mean, like, you know, they're always saying, like, oh, Wall Street, dude, are the economies in trouble? Wall Street, yeah, because they stopped production in China. And that's what they're trying to do because Trump's been in this in this trade war with China right now. And China's pissed. They're not happy about it. Like Trump is trying to move all the industry over to India. India and China don't get along. So there's this whole thing that's going on. And I'm telling you, dude, it's not that the coronavirus doesn't exist. Nobody's saying that. It exists. It's just a little bit stronger than the common cold. That's my honest opinion. I've been studying this stuff and... That's what I'm telling you. But that's a different podcast. I don't want to get too weird and weird people out, but that's God honest truth, man. Here's the funny thing. Your conspiracy theory. There's n I am not a conspiracy theorist, but I saw something, and I've repeated this on this podcast, that I saw something with my own eyes. I'm not crazy, Sam. You're not, brother. I'm not crazy. I got problems. <laughs> I got problems like everybody else, but I'm not crazy. I'm a little high alert than most people, you know. <laughs> I'm a little more PTSD. You are, dude. You are. I am high alert, and I don't like drama and stuff like that. But I'm not crazy. This was first. This first got the first case that we got diagnosed with was January 18th. I had to travel the 24th, and for some particular reason. I even asked myself that Sunday when I was coming back from Atlanta, I said to myself, is this me or are there more Asians than usual today at the airport? <laughs> like that Friday when I left, there was a lot of Asians. Yeah. But that Sunday in Atlanta, when I was coming to LA, it was like watching a movie tripping on acid. Yeah. Everybody seemed Asian. I'm not putting anybody down. I'm not making no uh, racist remarks. I'm just telling you what I saw. I remember coming back going, boy, that was a heavy Asian plane, you know. Like Where was it from? Atlanta. Interesting. Well, that's okay. a hub, isn't it? Okay, Maybe. so the hub, whatever it is, it just seemed like an overwhelming amount of Asians to everybody else who was traveling. And I get back, and they're talking about this thing, and, then it blows up. You know, I'm like everybody else. There was mosquitoes. There was remember two years ago, mosquitoes were gonna kill you, and then That's Ebola the thing, was gonna kill you. And all every things. election, so we're all we're all like, this is the type of people. You know, we're used to it. But this was something that it seemed like. It's like when somebody puts a, well, you put you 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 bomb your apartment. Yeah, you bomb your apartment, mm -hmm. and you come back and you go like, oh, okay, no roaches, and all of a sudden two days later. The guy next door knocks on your door and he goes, is it me 
but have you seen an unusual amount of roaches lately? And you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> the roaches went into his apartment. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Oh, my God. By me putting that bomb out, the guy next door, and all of a sudden, lady next door knocks on your door two days later. She goes, is it me? Or am I seeing more roaches lately? You're like, I'm roach free. Mm. You know, I ain't got a bug in here. There's, there's one. He's laying on the counter <laughs> upside down. His legs are moving. That's it. Yeah. That I saw that, and I came back, and, and I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing drugs. I'm not drinking. I'm not, I mean, I take an edible, whatever I fly, but I saw a lot more than what I thought. So in my world, if I ever was to hear this, I could actually raise my hand and say, I gotta be honest with you, the week of the 25th, there was an unusual high amount of Asians traveling that weekend. Like trying to get out, Like maybe. they knew something that we didn't know. They were walking with their head looked down, fast rolling those fucking cars those fucking things and i was like okay and now i'm seeing all this shit the cancellations you know south by southwest who the fuck would have thought you know and and and, and this is like this is gonna be all of march dude it's gonna be interesting how long this goes it's gonna be all of march <clears throat> and i told you i went to the comedy store to do sarah Mello's show Again, no reason to lie to you. We've both been regulars for 20 fucking years. Yeah. Past the kitchen. As soon as I walked into the main room, I smelt it. My fucking uh, spider, spider sense. senses yeah, dude. got up. I made that turn into the main room. It was heavy. Down the hallway, heavy. Behind the stage, it was heavy. When I opened up the green room, there was too many people in the fucking green room. Yeah, we're in the green room. And I walked out. I was like, fuck this place. I sat behind the, the by the corner where the door is. Yeah. But it, where you yeah. go out. Yeah. I sat there the rest of the night, and I went out, and I ran out of that main room. And it's like people are not respecting it enough. Well, I, that's a big thing I have to do with my show now. There's too many people hanging out. And, like, I'm very much into, like, I'm very, like, when I first moved here, man, like, I remember being at this one comedy club, and I'm not going to say the name of the comics or the managers, but they were all sitting there, and I could tell that the value of my opinion was totally weighed by what my IMDB credit was, you know? So I've always been very, very, like, um, cautious on how, like, how I treat younger comics. I always want to show them respect because, you know, you never know where they're going to go. And I remember that I was them when I was like, sure, I was going to be this really big name comic. And like, I felt like I was getting disrespect. So I always show love, man. Cause at the end of the day, they're people with a dream, man. And people don't realize you're laying a lot of shit on the line to come out here. And sometimes you don't realize till it's too late and it's almost too late to start something else. So you're kind of trying to figure out what to do next. So I always show people love. But the point is, is that it's gotten too busy back there. I have to let the comics who are going in the show chill and not, you know, because everybody wants, because the comedy store dog is like nothing you've ever seen before. There's no other place in the world. Like you can't go to the Viper room or the whiskey and hang out with Tool, right? Or hang out with Led Zeppelin or hang out with any big, the comedy store, the fucking savages are everywhere. All your heroes are just walking down the hall. So it's a very unique place. And so, but. Sometimes people, they have, you know, they don't have any of that uh, uh, social etiquette and they're not self-aware and they're just running the back and, you know, it's like, oh, I want to talk to Rogan. I want to talk to Diaz as well. It's like they're working, dude. They, you know, you got to give them their space to get working. So I totally understand what you, you were talking about. I have, uh, for my show personally, Comedy Chaos, I'm going to start really shutting down who can go backstage so the comics can have a moment of peace. And Well, no, no, I wasn't mad about that. I was just saying that there was a lot of people back there. There was a lot of people back there. And with this virus, yeah, you know, nobody fucking knows. There's no ventilation in that back it's green room. It's old school. It's old school. There's not a window back there. So if you go back there, you're breathing what everybody else is breathing. Yeah. All right. And if this is a six foot distance, so I just played it for what it was. I listen. I'm not fucking. I'm not. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna die. I don't yeah. think I'm gonna fucking die from it or whatever. I just want you to be cautious and making great fucking decisions. Mm -hmm. I just saw a thing. On Facebook, did you see it about the strip club in Vegas? That's no. fucking just like hand sanitizing. They went out and bought hundreds of thousands of sanitizer money. You can't touch the chick now. You can't. You have to 
How funny is that, dude? Did you believe this? During the epidemic, people are still getting lap dances, and they're like pareling their hands and shit. You, you know, there's around. no. I don't want a lap dance. I want you to sit on my face. Yeah, I gotta put her on my face. <laughs> what a, what lap dance? What am I ten? <laughs> what am I fourteen? Either you gotta sit in my face. Or I'm not going to. It's the piece. weirdest thing, dude. It's just, it's just, bro. This is gonna shut down a lot of stuff. I have for sure. You know, uh, they put something out that NBA games might have to be played with no audience. And LeBron said he didn't, he didn't want to play with that without a, a crowd, but like they might just have no crowds there. It's interesting. NBA shady as shit, though. They got that. They're all in that Chinese money and shit. That affected their ratings. Yeah, that was dude. crazy. That affected their ratings, dude. They got shut out of China for a while. That affected their ratings, man. When Br- LeBron was like, "Hey, man, mind your business. You don't know what's going on over there." We're like, "What? You're the guy that's telling us I can't breathe and every social thing you're putting your fucking your nose into." And all of a sudden, you're like, "Leave the Chinese alone, <laughs> dude." There's a million Muslims in concentration camps in China, and nobody gives a fuck, right? It's so weird, dude. China shady as shit. Why are there Muslims in, in concentration? Dude, camp? they got they just locked them down, dude. They're on lockdown, dude. They put them in these camps, man. In these internment camps, man. It's really sad and it's really scary, dude. And nobody's saying everything, anything because it's Muslims. And people are like, oh, okay. it's like, dude, they're people, man. It's like they got locked. Dude, something's going on. Listen, man. <clears throat> you know, a lot of this coronavirus hit in places where there were like riots going on. Hong Kong, you know, right, you know, this part of Italy that's right next to France where all these people were all rioting, right? Nobody's rioting anymore. Hong Kong's been shut down. And then they got on top of that, Google's helped created Chinese social credit scores, which is basically, dude, they calculate what kind of human being you are. And if your credit's too low, you can't get on flights, you can't get on buses, you can't do all this stuff. Now they're lo- now they're getting you, dude. You get in your house and they're locking people down. It's like really, it's like scary shit, dude. It's like some purge stuff going on over there, and that's why I think China's trying to play a game with us, dude. They don't like that Trump's trying to like even tariffs. I didn't even know there was that kind of tariffs, man. But not to get too serious, but I think there's a lot more to this. When Bill Gates is like Babe Ruth calling out his epidemics, like you know six 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 hundred million people dead or six million people dead, and he's pointing it, and he's been talking about it forever. He just happens to own the virus. Do you know that? You know Bill Gates has the patent on the coronavirus. How do you have a patent on a virus? He owns the patent on it. So basically, the patent is that if anybody comes up, you get a percentage of the vaccine, but he owns it. And the guy who's been talking about a fucking epidemic coming, dude, is the guy who happens to just own. Now, dude, you ready to get weird, dude? Hit me. If you take the heat, if you take the actual name of the virus it's not coronavirus it's something else and you do the hebrew translation of that word do you know what that word is kobe now here's where it gets weird dude kobe's buddy in this like lighthouse or lifeguard company he owns is also on the board of the three companies that own basically the uh the the patent on this drug uh, on this vaccine it's crazy, dude. That's, have you ever heard of Gematria? No. Okay, dude. This is like old Hebrew. Uh, it's basically where the Hebrew... Have you heard of Gematria? No. You've never heard of it? It's basically no, based on Hebrew math and numbers with words. Oh, okay. Words equal numbers. The letters, and, have, uh, the letters have a number associated with dude, them. It's, dude, with Kobe's whole thing, there's so much involved with that, dude. So a couple of weeks ago, you had a guy on the podcast... <laughs> Bishop Larry okay. Gators. And what was he saying? Broke it down, dude, that this was basically an assassination. Now, here's the crazy thing. On Google, the day that the moment the word got out, if you went and put in Kobe Bryant, it would say the de- his death date and say it wouldn't say day of death. It would say day of assassination. And if you Google that, you could see it. It said day of assassination. And basically, according to this guy, uh, they took out Kobe because Kobe was suing three pharmaceutical companies that were putting out a, a uh, black mamba um, uh, pharmaceutical, but they were putting opiates in it to get people hooked up. And he had found out about it and he had said no, he was suing them to stop it. And there's all these. He was supposed to go to court that week. 
the week he was the week he died, he was supposed to go to court and to deal with this stuff. So you know, in uh, if you look at uh, all this like uh, cult stuff, the number thirty three is a very big wor- number, right? Have you heard of that thirty three? W- where did he die? Cal- Calabasas. You know what district that is? Thirty three. It's the thirty third district in in the United States, and there's all those numbers, dude. When they announced it on ESPN that Kobe had died, you look at the you look at dude. This is weird shit, man. If you want me to stop, tell me, but because no, no, no. and please, it, dude, I'll talk to you about this. Your 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 comment section is gonna be like, I'm the biggest asshole. Please no, don't hate me. No, 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 no. I love all this stuff. I love that you took the time. You know, somebody took the time to research this stuff, so I know what the hell's going on, dude. I don't know it's what's crazy. Going on. If you look at like so, when ESPN announces that. The death of Kobe. It's during the Pro Bowl game, and if you look at the score of the game, if you break down Jamantria, it equals Kobe dead. It's crazy stuff, dude. And it's everything's twenty four. So when, so the night before Kobe dies, he's in Philadelphia. LeBron James is passing him on the all time scoring list, dude. On the court, do you know what was on the court? It's a very famous Philadelphia thing, but on the court was a snake, and the snake was chopped up, okay? And it's basically a symbol, and it's the symbol means join or die. And that was on the court when he was there, dude. And it's all this crazy stuff. Now, have you heard of the boulets? No. Okay, the boulets. So you know you have the skull and, cross, the skull and bones, that's a very secret society. The, the Ivy League schools were started by all the old uh, opium families. All the families who were who were running opium started the started the thirteen um, <clears throat> Ivy League schools. So this one, the Russell started the Skull <coughs> and Bones. Tell me when to stop if I'm boring you. Please. No, he's not boring me. Okay, they started the Skull and Bones. Okay, and they basically did this to create a uh, so they could give money to get a heads up on uh, elite children. Anyways. Blacks can't join the Skull and Bones. They're not allowed to join. So they started another group called the Boulets. And the Boulets are the black secret societies, dude. And these, their, whole ter- their whole saying is protect the table. They can't have a seat at the table. Their job is to protect the table. Okay? And it's all of these super elite African Americans are all part of this Boulet. Okay? LeBron James's chest, if you look at it, the tattoo is the boule symbol, which is a black fraternity symbol, which is crazy because he didn't go to college. So it's like he's got a giant boule symbol on his chest. He's part of the whole secret. And that's why I, I'm either convinced he wasn't at Kobe's thing or he was hiding. It's like some weird. You see pictures of LeBron at Kobe's thing. It, it looks like Bigfoot pictures. You're like, I've seen clear pictures of Bigfoot running through the the force, and I've seen a, a LeBron at at uh, Kobe's memorial, but it's all real stuff, dude. It's some real stuff. He got off because, and then, dude, he was into some dark art shit. Like, if you ever look at Kobe Bryant's workout, you ever hear of his famous workout? You know what it's called? The six 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 workout. Okay, if you look at his cha- children's book, that didn't come out. But if you look at the children's book, it's a picture of a tree with a tree below it, which is an old occult saying: "As above, so below." All that stuff, dude. A lot of he's his mamba symbol is a snake eating its tail. Very occultic, dude. Huge occult stuff. Now, are you ready? He had this lifeboat or life house company. Jeff Steibel, who is super shady, was his partner. Do you know who was on the board of that that whole thing? Jeffrey Epstein. Jesus. How many fucking things was Jeffrey Epstein a part of? <laughs> All of it, dude. All right, I'm done. No, no. How many things? Keep going. I, I don't care. I love all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, they dude. Pissed, they super pissed. occult, man. Now, if you look when Kobe died, dude, during the occultic holidays, it was a it was a holiday of sacrifice. The, it, during the during the dates, is the the the, the uh, January twenty sixth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was during that month of sacrifice, in particular, a virgin. It's crazy. Why was Kobe allowed to fly that day when nobody else was allowed? His his his. His his pilot was super skilled. All the biggest names used his pilot. Why was he allowed when all all the poli- LAPD helicopters were grounded? Everything was grounded except for Kobe Bryant's his his uh, helicopter. 
It was they were grounded because of the fog. That's that what morning. you're telling me. Like when me I came in that fog. morning, I remember going, "Wow, this is a lot of fog." And I came in at nine thirty. By the time I got home, it had just been mentioned on Twitter, and I couldn't find it on Yahoo yet. And yeah. then something came in. That's exactly when I got home. I got home at ten fifteen or something like that. Yeah, it was like a quick. Me and Simone got back. We got in the car, and boom, we came home. That's it. There was no drama. There was nobody at the airport. The inventor of the helicopter that um, Kobe was in is an old Freemason occultic. It's all, it's the, everything lines up. It's super crazy and super sad because I do think they often, because he was suing the pharmaceutical companies for millions of dollars because he found out they were putting op uh, um, uh, opiates in their, uh, in, their, in their medication to get people hooked. Do you ever worry about them coming after you? I'm, um, dude. I'm so low on the totem pole. There's people I know that do way crazier stuff. That, <clears throat> that, and maybe they will someday. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a dick joke comic, dude. I'm a late night dick joke comic who has had a certain a little bit of success, but I'm far from on the blip of everything. But I just find it interesting. I'm not trying to change anything. I just love to hear about it, dude. And all the craziness, but it just doesn't even stop there. If you look at Kobe's, uh, if you look at the Mamba logo, which is the, which is basically Baphomet, dude. It also looks like a, 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 a helicopter tailspin pointing down. It's crazy. It's crazy, dude. It's all there, man. It never fucking ends. It never ends. But but when you see it, the the th listen. Nobody's trying to change anything. Every, I just don't like getting lied to, and I just love to watch it and call it out in real time. And if listen, if I was wrong all the time, like how many times have you started something? You're like, I ain't good at this. I ain't gonna do it no more. You quit, right? If I was wrong most of the time, or a quarter of the time, or half the time, I wouldn't be doing this. I wouldn't be talking about this. I'm just, I'm hitting at a clip. That's insanity, dude. I just I call out all this stuff because I because you study their patterns and it all makes sense. I'm telling you, I don't even think Jeffrey Epstein's dead, dude. I don't think he's dead. I think he's somewhere chilling in the Bahamas somewhere, dude. They just activated his bank account. You see that? His bank account just got activated, and the bank was like, "Who activated this bank account?" Somebody activated the bank account. There's just a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't even make any sense. You know, you asked, well, how was Eddie a couple weeks ago when we had him on? I mean, you know, I, I've been locked up, you know, and I know when people check on you, I know the suicide watch of the wing, the fucking rat watch. Don't they have a, they have, they call it, they, where the rats go with something, protect PC, protective custody wing. And then you have the med wing. Bro, they check you all the time when you're in fucking jail. Every hour, and then after a certain amount, there's gaps. After midnight or something, there's two-hour gaps. Maybe the guy misses a gap here and there, but not like that night. Nothing like that night, what I've heard. Nothing like that. That's just too much. And that jail is kinky as fuck anyway. Well, they just found a loaded gun in Probably one of the yeah. cells. And that's what they tell you. That's the shit that somebody decided. They tell you they found one gun, they really found eight. Yeah. You know, that's what they tell you. You got to, bro, when you listen to this shit, you have to assume if they found one, they found eight. And a pound of heroin. And, you know, there's everything in there. If they're telling you, it's for a reason. I was just reading an article last week, two weeks ago, in the New York Times. How everybody wants, to, every inmate wants to go to Sing Sing. Sing Sing is the uh, maximum security prison an hour outside of Manhattan. I went there tons of times on visitation. I used to go visit somebody there oh. <laughs> on visitation. And it was like, you could just, they sit at tables like this. There was no glass. It was just a long table. And we would talk. And I remember talking to him one time. And fucking whenever the, you know, whenever the, Whenever you hand the kid over, that kid's got like a pound of heroin out of him. Yeah, right? Oh they take the kid and they're like, yeah, sit on my lap. And they're taking the heroin out of his pocket and putting it into their pocket. You pay the guard a small 50. He lets you go through with the heroin. And boom. 
it goes out into the fucking people don't realize. Yeah, you know? dude. When you're in prison and you see somebody handing off a prison a kid <laughs> to a prisoner, that kid's got a gun on him. He's just making the kid transfer. mules. Kid meals. <laughs> so when you we're like this, we're talking. There's no so you're his father. Right. I'm his brother. And we're talking to him. And all of a sudden I brought your son. Oh. Yeah. Come here. Come here. Come see you. <laughs> Boom. And then the guard will finally come over and go, we can now touch the kid. He already took the heroin out of his pocket. Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on back over here with the fucking coronavirus. And the kid, <laughs> now you're back with your uncle and he's shaking you. Good job. And you're like, you did good. Click, shut up. And he, he took it out of my pocket. Shut up. Don't worry about it. <laughs> How about the other, like there's groups of female officers who are just basically on Hope Patrol, dude. They make like bang to bang these like powerful uh, inmates. It's crazy, dude. Doug, there's so much shit that goes on in the prison. That the, 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 an American wouldn't, you, the, a guy like Lee wouldn't believe. Like you just wouldn't believe what goes on. Inside of prison. No, it's tough. I, I, I wouldn't. You don't want to. You don't want to believe. You don't really that the government's to, doing this to you. Like, you it's crazy. You can't believe that it's so negligent. You can't believe that it goes on. You know, the reason why I was reading this article about Sing Sing is they were saying that if you go to prison, the percentage of you, uh, the percentage of recidivism, is forty five percent. Forty five fucking percent. But if you get college educated, it's four percent. If you get some type of college education, it drops to four percent. How can it drop forty percent? So Sing Sing has a, a college has courses there. So all these inmates want to transfer to Sing Sing. Oh. It's really an hour outside the city. That's why they're going to transfer because it's heat makes it easier for your relatives to come visit you. They don't have to go up to uh, all the other prisons school. up there. You know, there's a town up there. Up there in New York, New York State, where you, where you grew up. Yeah, Cortland, outside of Cortland. There's cities up there that are just prison cities. Oh, yeah, 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 They're yeah, yeah. prison yeah, cities. Yeah. It's just a prison. People don't, like when I was going to shoot that movie for, uh, with Benicia Del Toro for Showtime, that thing that him, he did last year, what was that series he did on Showtime? Benicia Del Toro about a prisoner. That got oh, stuck. yeah, the, uh, the uh, lady who helped right, those two dudes get out. Those two dudes get out. They offered me like four episodes of that show, but it shot right on the Canadian border. So you couldn't even fly into Buffalo. You had to fly into Canada and drive over. It was closer. Like if you drove into Buffalo, it was oh, like an so hour weird. drive. Like it's an hour drive to fucking somewhere in nowhere. So when they told me you have to stay up there from August September 23rd to February 5th. Or nah. Like it's not going to happen. Number one, they got no hotels up there. But what they got up there, and that's exactly, I bumped into Benicio because Benicio's with CAA. I bumped into his agent one day and I go, how's Benicio like him? And he goes, he's fucking hating it. Sure. He's in a no civilization town. <laughs> it's a prison town. Yeah. Everything's spaced. So you, you got to. That prison's shady as shit, too. Which dude? one? The one where that shit went down. Do oh, you ever yeah. see the video oh, where yeah, like somebody's yeah. doing a news report yeah. and you see somebody pulling up a bucket with the drugs? Yeah. Right there on the right news there. report. Really? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> right where there. where was that jail where they escaped from? It's like I, I felt like it was I thought it was near Albany, but I don't think so. I think it's more yeah, in all the park. that is up there. There's a town. I went to I, when I lived in Boulder, I lived with a kid. And I didn't live with him. We were friends. We sold cars together. And he told me he goes, I had no options out of high school. He goes, I had no options, Joey. My options were to do the family business, work at the prisons. My mother works at the prisons. My father works at the prisons. My brothers and sisters work at the prisons. My parents, their brothers and sisters, their father worked at the prison. Yeah. That's it. You work into the prison. Great pay, benefits. He told me once. He goes, yeah, You work at the goddamn prison. Yeah, that's it. My cousin's doing that in Nebraska right now. He's he did my cousin who takes Eddie Bravo's uh jujitsu in Nebraska. In Omaha, yeah, Omaha. Right? He's working at a prison. He's banging some Muslim chick. I don't know how you find a Muslim chick in Nebraska, but he found her 
and he's like he's like um some kind of like counselor now at uh, a prison up there and he's like trying to be nice to everybody <laughs> he's like how's your day going they're like fuck you man yeah. i'm doing life what do you how do you think it's going yeah, he's, like, he's like hey, but he, he like he's like playing games with him he's like i'm doing great thank you for saying something enjoy your lunch and he just walks off dude yeah you don't say i remember like an old timer coming up to me one day going bro we don't say good morning around here Jesus, oh my God. I didn't want to be positive. I yeah, I do. Positive. I, when I, you know, when I got locked up, I was upset for like a week, guys. To be honest with you, after a week, I was like, "This ain't that bad." Can you believe that? I'm telling you this as a man. Somebody did a guide a couple of weeks ago about uh, how we would do in jail. We would r- 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 do what I did, run the joint, because when you're funny. You Everybody loves you. Oh, I, I, I've, I've thought about it. I'd run to, to uh, whatever it's called, solitary. I think I could do solitary fine. Why, dude? I'm, I'm terrified. You dude, it you is. want to live in a box? Yeah, it's I'm, like small. Nah, it's nah, like, dude, nah, nah, it's a nah. box, bro. Let me tell you something. When I, when I got locked up, it wasn't that bad. I could sit here and lie to you and tell you the first two weeks were hell because it was the last two weeks of August with no air. And I was on the third floor. Oh. And you don't stop sweating. Oh, I'm sure, you just dude. just don't stop sweating. When I went to... But you also have to remember that I made it through the system in less than a month. That was unheard of. That was unheard of. Like, you had to sit in the system. Like, when I got sentenced, they told me that day. They're like, listen, you better get comfortable in Boulder because you're not going to see... Canyon City till October, maybe November, maybe December, with that backed up. But I didn't care because county jail is two for one. <laughs> so it's two days for one. So I had them. Two. So remember, I got four years, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's simple math. Like I had no time because I got four years. There was a new law, House Bill 1200, passed. If it's a non offender, non violent crime, First offense, sentence gets cut in half. So it went from 24, from 48 to 24, right? Oh. I did a month, I had two weeks in county. That's a month. Yeah. So I had 23 months left, and you're eligible for a halfway house at 18 months. And you get put in a halfway house at the 16-month level. Once you're at 18 months, you're eligible for a halfway house. You're just a wake up away from going... Pack up your stuff. Get out. Like, your girlfriend is on the way to visit you on a four-hour drive. And they'll tap you on the shoulder and go, get your stuff. You're leaving an hour. And you're like, what about my girlfriend? Like, Who cares? <laughs> well, that's because I used to love, like, those lock-up shows, all that stuff. It's crazy to me. Like, you were at least living in Colorado. But let's say you went on vacation or to do a show in Denver and did something. You could just end up in jail somewhere where you have nothing, like, nothing. It's crazy. You just end up in jail. I spent one night in jail. I bought drugs off a hooker because I had gotten sober and like I was itching and I was like, fuck, I need drugs, dude. And nobody has drugs except I didn't know anybody with drugs. This is in Vegas. This is here in LA. Oh my God. Way back when I was just running and gunning. And I didn't know anybody that had drugs because like every time you get sober, you're like, dude, I'm going to get rid of all the drug dealers' names. No drug dealers in my phone. And then you're like, fuck, man, I got I got a couple days off. I got nowhere to be. Man, I got to get weird, right? So, <laughs> and I'd be like, where? So I'd be like, who's got drugs? And I'd see this hooker. I'm like, okay, man, the hookers know where drugs are, dude. And uh, so like, she's like, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll get you some drugs. Let me get you some drugs. I'm like, I'm not even sure this is a chick, to be honest with you, but I didn't even care at this point. You know, it's, you know. <laughs> She got a wig on, look, walks like a chick, talks like a chick. Got to be a chick, this right? This is Hollywood. This is a Hollywood. That's the stroll, the whole stroll, you know? And I see her. She's like, yeah, look, let's do it. So we go. I pull, and she runs in. She grabs my shit. Uh, 40 bucks. I got 40 bucks worth. And as soon as I pull out, boop, boop, I'm like, oh, man, life is over, dude. I am done, man. Yeah. So they pull me over. I'm like, oh, man, I'm done, done. I'm never going to go to Canada. I'm just going through all this stuff. So 
So uh, they get me out. They handcuff me. I'm like right in Hollywood where like I live eight, three blocks from me. I'm like, I'm fucked, man. And uh, he's like, where's the drugs? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. And he reaches in. He pulls out. And, dude, I, I gotten, I'd basically gotten ran by this by this chick or whatever it was. Uh, for 40 bucks, I got like nothing, right? And I was like, I didn't care at that point because I just wanted to yeah, run and gun, God. right? Run and gun. So he's like, he pulls it out. He's like, where's the rest of it? I go, Man, that's it. And like, I made a mistake. I shouldn't even, you know, new rules. Anybody listening, if you haven't been to jail, never admit to anything. They're not your friends, man. You don't know. They're not your friends. You don't know. What is this? I don't know, dude. Where'd you get this? Don't don't know what you're talking about. Don't know. I didn't know that, right? I don't know nobody. <laughs> so I, I, I end up, uh, so he's like, he pulls out, he goes, where's the rest of it? I go, that's it. He goes, where's the rest? I go, that's it. He goes, how much did you pay for this? And I go, 40. And he looked at it. He started laughing. And then the chick who just fu- jacked me started laughing. Everyone's laughing because I'd basically gotten taken for the 40 that I paid for like the nothing, the nothing of drugs I had bought, right? So then I go to jail and it's my only night I ever stayed in jail. And, L.A. County. Uh, no, uh, West Hollywood. Right by Omeba? Yeah. No, 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 no. Down to, uh, in Boys Town, man. I don't know why they took me there because it was way down the other way. But they they took me to, to the West Hollywood Sheriff's Jail. Okay. And, dude, I don't know what it is, but, dude, if they know it's your first time in jail, only they t- they try to run some shit on you. Dude, they put this homeless dude in it within two seconds. Shits his pants, dude. They pull him out, send another one in. Shits his pants, dude. They're just so I'm trying, you know. So I, I don't know what I'm getting charged with. So I like they're doing my, and this is the time I had a super like Armenian mohawk, and it's like I'm like, what am I getting charged with? He's like felony uh, possession. I'm like, and I just started. I'm like, oh man, I'm never gonna travel anywhere to do stand up, and, and to this day, so. Uh, like, I've been doing this Armenian benefit for, like, 20 years, man. It's the Armenian bone mail registry, right? Uh, and the and on the board is Garagos, the lawyer. And, like, dude, I mean, I'm broke at this time, dude. Like, I got no money, man. And, I, and I'm like, fuck, man. I'm going to call this dude and just see if I can do a Hail Mary pass. So I call him up. I'm like, hey. He's like, what's up, Sammy? I go, hey, man, I made some bad decisions, and I need some legal thing. And he's like, well, okay, what what, what do you got? How much cash you got? <clears throat> I'm like, I'm hurt. And he's like, okay, just come down. So he comes down. He goes, here, I'm going to charge you $1,500. i am going to represent you. And they sent me down. And uh, I, I, so I'm we're going to this trial, right? Dude, the police. So they do. I forget what the what it's called, but they basically say they want to all the records on the cop that arrest me, right? Ex- exploration i don't know what the word is but they call it so i set another trial i show up with my lawyer and dude the, the the police union rep shows up and goes we're not gonna give our records on this on this cop and we want the charges dropped and the charges got dropped because this dude was dirty so and, and dude and like if i hadn't done this charity event and got a lawyer that knew how to run this game I would have been effed, man, but I got out of it because I did charity work and I never had to, and dude, I never messed with that shit again, dude. But, dude, I mean, like, that's the system, man. Poor people get fucked, dude. Yeah. Fuck, dude, that is the worst. When you see those lights go, you're like, oh, man, you're thinking your mom's going to find out. You're you know, like, when hey. you get arrested, I learned it the hard way. I was, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a cheap person. But nobody wants to pay for a lawyer. Nobody wants to pay for a lawyer. And I'll never forget getting arrested, getting heat. The uh, the, the other guy got arrested first, so he had a private defender. That means you can't have a private defender because it's, it's a conflict of interest. So they had to get me a court-appointed lawyer who was horrible. He was horrible. He was horrible. But I ran with it. I'm like, maybe, let's see what happens. And my friend, and I had a, I called, everybody told me to call this one guy. I called him, and he wasn't a friend of mine, but we became friends over time. And he sat me down. The first thing he said is, you better open your piggy bank. And I go, I just started putting money in that piggy bank. (laughs) That piggy bank has been empty for two years. 
And now they finally put money in that piggy bank. Like, it broke my heart. Oh, yeah. Like, I got to open it. And he's like, you got to open it. And I go, how much? And he goes, well, how much do you want to stay out? (laughs) How much do you want your freedom? Yeah. You know? So I had to take everything I had. And, you know, I, I kept the attorney I had until I could find the better one. But the best thing I did was my friend recommended to meet with a law clerk, the dean of the law school. He goes, trust me, when I got in trouble, from the mind told me to go meet with him. He'll simplify it for you in one conversation. I think the guy wanted like three grand. Oh, man. For a half hour or something. Oh, my God. Man, that is cash, dude. And I was like broken. But I go, you know what? I'm going to cancel it. I'm not going to pay him 2500 or whatever. I'm going to call my mother's attorney in Jersey. <laughs> Sam DeLuca. This guy was a savage. You ready for this? Yeah. I called him. I'm like, same thing you did. It's Joey Diaz. It's Denora's son. Blah, 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 blah. He goes, all right. He goes, I want 30 just to get on the plane. It was 1987, guys. And this guy just wanted 30 to get on the plane. 30 grand. 30 grand. Oh, my God. Just to get on the plane. So I knew already. Like that, I was like, let me call you back in five minutes. I was like, 30 grand just for a plane ride. What am I going to do about this trial? What am I going to do? And Once I went to see the law clerk, the law clerk (laughs) told me exactly what to do. The, The steps, you know, he goes, I would take your case. But as soon as I walk in there with you, they're going to give you 10 years. He goes, you're in the land. What do you do when you're in Rome? Do one in Rome. He goes, you bring some fucking uh, Jew attorney in here, Slick. They're going to throw the book at you. They don't want to see a Slick Jew in here. They don't want to see like a Slick white guy. You got to hire a guy that mirrors them. This guy told me that at the time, the head of the law school was Spanish. So he like we he got interested in me and he's like, You wanna go to law school? And I'm like, fuck yeah. And he's like, I'll hook you up. I'll put you in the COP program. I mean, oh my God, it was crazy. A felon that Spanish will accept you and all this shit. So he broke it down for me. He goes, This is what you, he goes, listen, you could pay all the money in the world, you're still going to do ninety days. He goes, There's no judge that's not gonna sentence you ninety days. He goes, I don't care who you walk in there, you're doing at least 90 days. I go, what about work release? He goes, oof, I don't think so. He goes, that's going to be fucking tight. And I got, he gave me a short list of guys, and I had to meet with all of them. And I can't tell you the number my guy wanted. He wanted a piece first up front, and then he wanted a back end. Oh, my God. I had to give it to him. Oh, my God. But this white boy went to work, Jack. A back end of what? <laughs> you have to give him up front and a back end. Yeah, but the back end's like when the movie does one, you get points on how much the movie makes. No, there's no back end. <laughs> like, what, yeah. what are you talking no, about? No, back end is what you're given. It's what you're given. So it's 10 just to open up the conversation. And I'll let you know when that runs out. <laughs> Well, yeah. Get, hey, I'll let I got to run it. it. I'll, let you, I'll let you know when the 10 <laughs> runs out. And then it was like I was on retainer for a month. So from January or February of 87 till from December of 87. No, from January of 87 to August on 87. I think I had to give them two grand a month. Something like that, calls, paperwork. And then I got hip to the thing. Those calls were costing me $200. Yeah. So I didn't call them. The worst. Did not call them. I would not call them. I could see my bill went down. <laughs> I'm like, oof. Because every time I call them, I'd fucking complain about something. I just saw a bell across the street on here. 250 250 250 250 oh. But this guy was good. He got the job done for me. You got, hey man, he you pay broke, for what you get. He explained it to me. Get what you pay for. He told me the steps, what he was going to do. Like I met with him, and then a week later, I met with him again. He turned the sheet of paper around, he handed it to me. 
He goes, these are the steps. And he hooked me up with a private investigator to counter, private investigate, counter everything. That motherfucker charged me an arm and a leg. That was miserable. Oh. It was miserable. But that, and then the divorce, don't even get me started. <laughs> my divorce was easily 200000 Oh, my God. And 160 of that went in credit cards. And half of that I paid and half of that I didn't. I just ripped up the card and said, give me a bad credit score. It was horrible. It was a horrible experience. Dude, the whole legal system is ridiculous, system. dude. You get involved in the legal system. It's so bad, dude. Done. Now I know how to narrow it down. Like, now I got everything ready. I Joey have. Diaz, do you know that I am, like, 17 and 3 in Traffic Corp, though? Are you? Yeah, dude. I represent myself all the time. And you beat him? Dude, I beat, I beat a red light camera one time, dude. I beat this, dude. I fight it tooth and nail. I show up in a suit. I cross-examine the cops, man. I one time... Uh, What's it called when you call in a witness? I subpoenaed my girlfriend one time. I subpoenaed her to come in. And as a witness, I cross-examined her. I lit, I set these cops up, dog. I set them up. I get them going one way. And then, boom, I prove they're liars, dude. And the judges get so pissed, man. They get so pissed, man. One chick was like, okay, sit down. And then she went the whole day with all of her cases. She went the whole day. And then she pulled me up at, at the end, and she's basically like, dude, I want to find you guilty because you're an asshole, okay? But I'm going to let you go because in the eyes of justice, you weren't, you didn't break the law. You did what you had to do. And I crossed, dude, this cop stayed the whole time just mean mugging me, like watching what was going to happen because I, I lit him up, dude. I set him up. I'm like, how's traffic going? I went to the board, which had all the intersections. And I go, explain traffic. Was it free flowing? Wasn't free flowing. I took pictures of it. So I caught him lying on that part, dude. Always. The only time I didn't win in a cross examination was when the cop lied. The cop straight up lied. And I, and I lost. I go, okay, man. Well, you know what? I can't, I can't win if you're not going to tell the truth. That's it, dude. 17 and three. That's a lot of traffic tickets. Dude, because I used to have a red car and they pull that thing over all the time. Really? Yeah, dude. Red cars get pulled over all I the knew time. That, but I didn't know if you had a. All the time, dude. That's why I hear black people complain about cops. I'm like, dude, have you been pulled over 20 times? Because I have. Uh, dude, I used to do a joke about I get like a three hundred dollar ticket and thank the cops. You ever done that? You get like a three hundred ticket, you're like, thank you. You're like, dude, that's like saying thank you after you got prison rape, dude. The worst ticket I ever got was September fourteenth, two thousand, three days after nine eleven. Or two thousand one. Mm -hmm. Was nine eleven? Three days after nine eleven. You ready for this one? I made a left turn. On Curson. You know what Curson is? Yeah. 11, right? Yeah. There. Yeah. <clears throat> You're not even going to believe this. This could only happen to Uncle Joey. Where were you on? Santa Monica? I or on, I was on I was on how, uh, Sunset Boulevard and I made a left on Curson and yeah. pulled into the 7 Eleven. Yeah. 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 Pulled in legit the whole thing. Yeah. I'm sitting. I, get I know out of the exactly car. what you're talking about. What happened was a car left his tires. Like there was four cars. Yeah. So there's three, four, and this is the handicap spot. So this guy parked here, this guy parked in this lane, this guy parked here, this guy parked here, and my car was on the handicap spot. Oh, that's was, the worst, I was dude. standing in front of 7-Eleven, and I saw the cop go by and actually make a U-turn and pulled in and got out of his car and said, whose car is this? And I go, mine. He goes, let me get your license and registration. I go, the car's not stolen. He goes, I didn't say that. Uh, the worst, dude. $450 ticket. Did Handicap Jesus call the cop? Well, I'm assuming he was parked no, in a handicap no, no, spot. No, 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 This. <laughs> so I, I think I did something. I forget what. The, I, I did something creepy. I got out of it. I, got, I took a picture or something. Like I took pictures. Something happened. Where I was like, bro, look at the cars. That the parking handicap parking is still is still open or something like that. Yeah. And I was with Rand. Yeah. Because <laughs> we all live by Curson. We all live remember Ralphie yeah, May yeah, lived yeah. on yeah. 
So the guy I was with lived in Ralphie's building. And he went over and got a camera and ran back while the cop was giving me the ticket and took the pictures. And then I took it to court and beat him. Yeah, and dude. Then one time I was driving down um I forget the name of the fucking street. It's got a post office on it by Hollywood also. There's a seven eleven on that corner. Down the corner was that bar. That used to serve the fuck. It doesn't matter. Sacred Heart School. Yes. You know what Sacred Heart yes. School is? Where Pacquiao goes to yeah, church. Yeah, 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 church. yeah, yeah. Down that block, there's a post office. There's a school. God, uh, there's something else on that block. One day I'm going down that block, and a friend of mine and I make a left, a right, to go to Gower. I'm going to Gower Studios. Okay. I make a right. I uh, I'm on Fountain, maybe. And as I make the right on Fountain. I stop at the stop line, my phone rings. I swear to God. I look down at the phone like this, and when I look up, a motorcycle cop comes right across, and he goes, pull over. And he gave me a ticket for being on the phone. I go, Unbelievable. He goes, I just saw you look at it. I go, I looked at it because my friend called, but I didn't pick it up. But <laughs> yeah. Still, he gave me a ticket. That was the worst out of all the tickets because I went down there. I tried to argue it. They said no. But they were like, come here, listen, just pay the fine. But that that's not what pissed me off. I had to do like the this traffic school. Yeah. Like one point, and then they took it, they took the point back. Well, my license is clean. What pissed me off the most about this at that time was I didn't have a California license. Do you know that? No. I had a Colorado license. I never decided to switch it. Okay. I never switched it over. Like, well, who cares about me? Yeah. Like, I wasn't paying that. No, nothing about nothing. I went down there, and when I went down there, they said, okay, Mr. Diaz, guilty, blah, 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 blah whatever shit. They basically told me, like, listen, we gave you, uh, that's, that's what I pleaded to, to not having a, a ticket, a license. Oh, yeah. Uh, so uh, I, a thought, California I license. thought they would say, bring the license. And it gets taken off. They were like, "Listen, you could pay two hundred and come back with your license, or you could pay three twenty-five and not come back at all. We don't give, really give a fuck if you get a license or not." They pretty much told me that. Yeah, I was like, "Take the three twenty-five." Yeah, dude. I'm sure I taking my I mean, driving test. Never see you guys again. No, I gave them the three twenty-five. I was first off. They go, "Have you been to court?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. First off, they go, "Who speaks Spanish and who doesn't?" Half the fucking court gets up, and they put you on the other side. Have you been through that? Yeah, dude. People show up in their pajamas. It's fucking people, crazy. Dude, people crazy. dress like shit for court. I have been in court in New York, Colorado, New Jersey. I've never seen court crazy like California. Dude, Long Beach? Ever been to Long Beach no. court? Dude, that's shady as shit. Chicks with fucking neck tattoos looking like they're about to shang somebody for child support. It's shady as shit out in Long Beach. Long Beach is the best city. It's like L.A. adjacent. Like the real people, you, like a real audience. You play the Long Beach Laugh Factory, ton of fun, man. But that court is shady as shit, dude. Shady as shit. Prison tats, face tats, up to no good. Listen, you don't want to be in prison today. No way, dude. Today is not. We're not. In a, today is not a good. When I when I got locked up was thirty years ago. That's a complete. People were smoking still. You could wear your own clothes inside. You know, HIV was the big thing. You know, that was the biggest fear inside there. I, if people want me to tell you that it was like the, it wasn't at all. It wasn't at all, Sam. Like I said, I was unhappy for two weeks because I was. Uh, what do you call that when you're getting off powder and? Oh, you're uh, you're yeah detoxing. yeah detoxing. I was detoxing. I was detoxing in there the first two weeks. I'd never. You know, I've been smoking dope since 78. Yeah. It was 88. Back when it was clean dope, yeah. too. It was set, It was eight, 88, and I went cold turkey, you know? I have been doing powder since 79, straight. There was never, like, the biggest fear I had about getting locked up was stopping tutuluts. That was the biggest fear I had. As far as physical fear and that stuff, I had no fear at all. 
I now mean, it's got fentanyl in it, dude. It's got all sorts. So you don't know what you're snorting, dude. Drug dealers have to be the worst business people ever, right? Because they're the only ones who sell their customers crap. It, like, ruins your business model. Like, they're never going to come back to you, dude. And now this fentanyl stuff. So, dude, what's really crazy is back in the Obama administration, Obama gave the Long Beach uh, port to China. Just gave it to China. China was running the Long Beach port. And that's where all the shit was coming through, dude. And that, as much as people hate Donald Trump, one of the good things that he did is he took that port back. He goes, uh-uh, you ain't running this port no more. This is the American port. We're, we're running the port now. A lot of dark stuff was com- coming through that Long Beach port. In particular, fentanyl. Fentanyl was like made at MIT. Some Chinese dude grabbed it, took it back to China, and they've been shipping it over here because that is their uh, their uh, counter to the uh, British India opium wars of a long time ago. You know why in China, if you get caught drug dealing, it's the death penalty because of the opium wars. Because back in the day, these like these British families were just like getting the whole entire population of of China hooked on heroin, and then the the emperor at one point made it illegal to sell drugs, and it was a giant war, and that's it. And dude, I mean, dude, if you knew all the stuff that we did to get opium, man, Vietnam was not about communism; it was about the Golden Triangle, dude. They're they're opium fields, and that's the same thing Afghanistan was about. The Taliban were burning down the opium fields. And these these pharmaceutical companies couldn't have that, so we had to go into war, man. Why did we go into Afghanistan when it was 19 Saudi Arabians? Because we had to take control of those opium fields. And you, you can see pictures of military people guarding those opium f- fields. And you can say whatever you want about Trump again. He's trying to get the hell out of Afghanistan, dude. That is just sucking our money up, man. Trying to get out of there. So he makes these deals with the Taliban. Just let us get out. Don't attack us. And when you put that clause in there, of course somebody's going to attack. And it's not probably going to be the Taliban. Why do they want to attack us when they want us gone? We're we're saying we're leaving. Why are you attacking us? It's not them. It's people who no, don't want us to I ran then. I thought I ran was going to kill us because we, we, we killed that dude. You want to hear some crazy shit, dude? There's a belief that Iran and Trump worked together to take out that Solomon because that Solomon was getting too powerful. He's getting too popular and too powerful. So they set him up and Trump did a, did a favor to Iran by taking that dude out. And that kind of stopped World War Three. I'm telling you, man. I, I Listen, dude. I am of no party, brother. I'm on the party of humanity. I'm all about people. But there's something, Trump is different than the other dudes. And I don't know what it is. I'm not saying he's a good guy. I think he's a crime boss. And it's there's no good guys. They're just crime bosses. And his crime organization is taking over Washington, D.C. And he kicked out this other cabal, like uh, the George Bush cabal, which was George Bush, uh, Clinton's, and the Obamas. Kick them out. And they want back in. Because they want the purse strings. And I think that's really what's going on here. Trump isn't, Trump, I'm not saying Trump's a great guy. He does some shady shit, man. But, you know, like most, and tell me if I'm wrong, but most crime bosses want a clean neighborhood, right? They run crime, but they want organization. They want clean. They want business to be done. And they don't want anyone to disrupt that. That's what I think Trump is. And he's going, he's banging with this Hillary who's a shady as shit motherfucker, man. How's this bitch getting, like, docu-series and podcasts? Like, she, she's like a comic, dude. She's getting all this shit. Like, she's doing a pod. Who's going to listen to Hillary Clinton podcast? A lot of people. Uh, dude, and please let me know if you do so I can a block you people. out of my life. A lot of people. More people than will listen to you and me, brother. No, I, I can't believe that. Trust me, I'm telling you. Trust me, I'm telling you. We got Stockholm Syndrome in this country. We're living in mild communism. We don't even see it. Coming. We don't even see it. And that's the difference you between us and Russia. You don't even they see know it they're under that control. They know they're under it. We act Last like night, I went, to, I went to communism port number one with my wife. <laughs> what? A uh, uh, couple of day, nights ago, I went to communism port number one with my wife, Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to Starbucks, went to dinner. It was date night. I took out the dinner and went, I want to go to Starbucks, get a coffee. Let's go get a coffee. Went and got a coffee. And we were in Starbucks, and we were dealing with possibly <laughs> the dumbest person. The kids are getting dumb, dude. 
the dumbest person I ever met in my life. So he would yell the coffee before he would start making it. So I'm sitting there with my wife waiting for my coffee. And he's like, Joey, flat white. And I get up and I go, where's the coffee? He goes, oh, I'm going to start making it. Now. I go, Why did you yell my name? You know what I'm saying? Like, what? My wife looked at me like, just, I wasn't even mad. I said something to her, like, don't even get, don't take it personal. Don't even take it personal because they just, they, they, this is mild communism. Yeah, they're trying to. are living dude. in mild communism. If you don't know that, you're, you're out of your mind. Between the cameras, the phones, the lines that they have, make a stand in on purpose. You know, dude, food line. Set five hours to vote. When has that yeah. ever happened in your life, that's, dude? That's mild communism. That's mild communism. Yeah. That's why I don't like when you go to Austin. Oh, you have to eat the barbecue. I ain't standing on line. Yeah, I'm with you, dude. I'm not standing on line. I don't ever do not, lines. And I'm not paying for me. Outside of lines. cocaine lines, I never did lines. Me neither. I don't do lines. I don't get it. I mean, like, I drive. We got to do a line. It ain't going to happen. Yeah, dude. I, I go, don't stand on line. The taco can't be that good. You ever walk that, drive down like Sunset or Hollywood and you see this line out this out this nightclub and it's all these hot chicks and they're wait. Why are you waiting in line? You're why people are going to the club. You can go hang out and hang out the laundry mat. That place will be jumping if there's a bunch of hot chicks in like mini skirt. I don't get. I don't want get. It's like it's like it's like twelve thirty at night. The bars close. The, the and last calls at one thirty, and you're still waiting in line. Like what are you doing? What about the people that wait in line for breakfast at the skillet? Oh, I'll fight everybody. Skillet across right on uh, what, what's the name of that place? The skillet. Um, that people still wait online on Sunset. Last time I had to go for blood test. I drove by there, and that was like nine. Oh, on, uh, on uh, uh, sunset. sunset. Yeah, 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 yeah. Every in and out. Huh? Every oh, yeah. Every in and out. There's a lot. Where'd Mexican high school kids go before in and out, dude? <laughs> I mean, dude, it's, I like. I've oh, never ho- seen anything. How about that hot dog place, man? It's a great hot dog, but you see people, like, lying out the Where? door. On, uh, I don't want to say the name, but it's like the Pinks, man. It's a great hot dog. Oh, that's a terrible hot dog. <laughs> that's the worst hot dog you'll ever eat in your life. I went there one time in 98 and threw it away. Like the one time I had a like, Taco Bell commercial. I yeah. Honey. And I took, like, it was like me and two of my buddies. And we went down and I was like, and they're white kids. They're from Idaho or some shit. They're eating stuff. I'm like, how can you eat this? Uh, yeah. The bun was terrible. The the dog the, is dry the dog as shit. Is terrible. Everything. I mean, the food, the fries were bad. Everything was bad. Everything was bad. Then when it is good, you walk out. Like I remember, there was a place on Hollywood Boulevard that cooked the hot dogs and beer, and they gave they had big French fries with this with this uh, cream. Oh, Lee. They had like bigger fries than most. You know how LA has yeah, the Chinese yeah. fries? Yeah, yeah. They're all McDonald's fries. <laughs> this place had a, a steak fry, but just a little smaller. And they were cut with a knife and big, and they were fresh. You throw them right in in front of you, you know, and cook them. And then he'd give you like this little sauce, and you dip the French fries in while you were eating a hot dog, and they got fresh squeezed lemonade. Oh. But the combo is $12. I didn't know until I left there until my wife was like, it's a good hot dog, but we spent yeah. $42. Oh, my. Dude, it's ridiculous. Dogs. You're like, you know what? You're making a good point there. <laughs> we are spending. That's crazy. I could get 20 hot. Down the seaside, I get 20 hot dogs yeah. for 20 bucks for 40 bucks. Like, I think there was a place I went to Seaside Park one time. Last time I was at Seaside Park, there was a guy on the corner that gave you 10 hot dogs for $20. <laughs> I bought them all, and I ate them all. Spicy <laughs> chili. You just stood right there. I kept eating hot dogs. Ten of them. Nice. Ten hot dogs for $20. These motherfuckers don't know. Dude, this town, they just make up numbers to see what will pay. They don't know. They don't know. So it just, just doesn't matter at all. Sammy Trips, man, you've come along with it. You're a father now. Yeah, I'm a dad. Shout out to the mother of the children, Martha. She wanted me to say nice things. She's like, you better say nice things about me. I'm like, I have nothing but love for you, and I appreciate it. How's it feel, Trip? I love it. It's it's a giant change in my life, and it's the best blessing ever. And when people say that, when you don't have kids, you hear people say that, you're like, whatever. No, it really is. 
it has allowed me to change the way I operate. And uh, I, I work smart, not hard. Now I have to work smart. I mean, I've always hustled, but now I have to pick and choose where I hustle, how I hustle. And it's a blessing, dude. And we got a nice little house. And, you know, the baby's mama, the mother of the child, uh, is a wonderful person, Martha. And she's, it's great, dude. I love my kids. Ghost and Ninja, dude. Ghost and Ninja. How old are they now? They are one month, two days. And how does it feel to you walking around? Does it feel like you're walking on? I'm just floating, dude. Floating on clouds. Now, there's a couple moments when they're crying and you want to go to sleep. But even then, it's like it's impossible to get mad at them. You know, you're just like, oh, okay, okay, we go, okay. You just, and you know, there's times I get, you get no sleep. When people tell you no sleep, it's no sleep, dude. Those babies. But now we're starting to enter a nice little pace. They're sleeping a little longer. Like, dude, like recently I got four hours, man. Oh, That's dude. some Terry Shivo shit That's right your there. Family taking this shit, mom and dad. They all love it, dude. They all love they it. Come out to visit. They're coming to visit. Yeah, they they you know they have they have to get off from work, but they're all coming. My brother's super excited. My brother will run strip bars. My brother flips strip bars, and he's like, now they have nieces. I kind of don't want to be here anymore. And so he's gonna come out. We're very excited. Martha's mom came out. She's wonderful. Stance is wonderful. And uh, you know, for every one kid, you have to have two uh, an extra adult. So if you have one kid. You have two adults. If you have two kids, you need three adults. So you got to have like a, a rotation, eight-hour shifts, man, just to get it done. But they're great. The mom's just pumping milk. She's a milk machine. Milk machine. Got wins. Sammy, Jesus, what did you do to deserve this? Twin? I don't even know, dude, because she doesn't have twins in her family, and I don't have twins and in my girls. family. Like I said, I always knew I was going to have <laughs> girls. Why would God give you an eye? Me, girls. you, Rogan. Like, there's a whole bunch of people with girls. girls. And you have to change. You have to change the way you think, change the way you act. As you can tell, look who my boss is. <laughs> she told me today she was coming here. Like, I'm coming with you. And is she bothering anybody? No, no dude. Anybody? Your, Your kid she is just wants to be beautiful. Close. And this is what you need to do. I took her to the movies this morning. I took her. To see, uh, I took it to ice skating, you know, and it's so weird how I still remember me getting, I could honestly say this, I still remember calling Ralphie and going, what's the story? We're getting high or what? He's like, man, I'm over here with the kids. I'll have to see you later. And me hanging up like, what a fool, you know? And now I, I feel like I owe him an apology because it's like, I can't even explain to you. I love when people hit me up. Hey, come to the West Side. I got a podcast studio. You're in no danger. That's an hour. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. That's an hour. And then I'm going to be there for 10 minutes, 20. And that's another hour and a half. And then I got to drive back. And that's yeah. an hour. I got till 2.30. Yeah. I got till 2.30. Yeah. So I really can't. That's three hours. If you're in Burbank, Elysian Park is the farthest I'll go for a podcast. You know, maybe Tom Segura up here. Uh, and the other guy, uh, Rogan, well, no, Pry Kreischer, no, the other guy, no, he was just here, Sickler, Sickler, oh, Sicklers, because they're close by, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't go to Marina Del Rey for your podcast. I love the valley, by the way. I was, uh, Hollywood forever. I love the valley. Are you dude. in the valley now? Yeah, dude, Valley Village, brother. Okay, so you're hop, skipping, and jump. I love it, man. Dog, when I first moved from Hollywood, I told my wife, don't expect me to do anything up here. I remember the first two nights I couldn't sleep. Because it was so quiet. It was like completely different than when I was used to the, the, the noise and the yelling and screaming in Hollywood all night. I lived right there on Schrader. You know, that's where it was dead. It was crack then. Yeah. When I moved in there in the corner, they were selling crack in Hollywood. 98, they were selling crack on all those streets. By the by the Man's Chinese Theater, all you had to do is walk to, that's orange. Yeah. So all you had to do is walk to uh, Selma. Yeah, Selma. dude. Selma, if you just walked off Hollywood Boulevard by the by the Mass Chinese Theater, walked down a block, there'd be three guys there selling crack. I smoked crack with that guy, that silver robot guy. I smoked crack for six weeks. Yeah. Dude, the whole time you smoke crack, all you're thinking is like, fuck, I'm smoking crack, dude. I'm even, smoking I crack. I smoking out of a can. I didn't even have a pipe. I wouldn't commit. It's the I worst, dude. I wouldn't commit. I did not commit. It had started because I used to drive on that street. And I would see those three skinny black guys sitting out there at night. <laughs> and finally, one night, I said, bro, what's up? 
And he goes, what's up? What's up? What's up? I don't know. What's up? You holding? What do you got? 20. Yeah, I took a 20 home with me. I remember like, this is how naive I was to crack. <laughs> I cut it and I snorted it. And I'm like, nothing happened. It's not like cheese. And I told my friend the next day, I went over to that corner. He goes, that's not coke. That's crack, stupid. So I go, really? So I went over there again the next day and bought some more. And this time, went and brought a can home. Uh, my mother actually said, what's that smell? And I'm like, I got this new reefer. And I'm in there. So I would have to smoke the reefer and the crack at the same time. So I smoked crack for about six weeks. Oh, man. For six weeks, I was hooked. Lying and sinker. I would go home, get a can of Coke, and empty it, dry it out with a blow dryer, and then make a little holes in it mm. and use a lighter, and I would go downstairs. And cracked sit, out. Cracked up. You know the crack dealer hates? The meth dealer, dude. Crack dealers hate when you discover meth. That's what somebody told me. I Because I go to these meetings all the time. You hear these stories. And they're like, dude, crack dealer hates meth dealer, dude. So I did crack until I ran out of it in El Paso. I went to El Paso for a week. And there was I couldn't get crack. I could only get the real stuff. Yeah. Thank God. It was everywhere. The real uh, stuff is everywhere. Uh, El Paso. But nobody was cracking it up. <laughs> now I know how to crack it up with a microwave oven. I know exactly how to crack it up. Two oh, fingers. really? Yeah, three fingers of water, coffee oh. cup, coffee cup, three fingers of water, a gram of powder, and two. What do you just pour the powder right in? Right in. You pour the baking soda in first. Two tenths of baking soda, and then a gram of powder. Put it in the microwave oven for twenty seconds. Ding, ding. <laughs> You take it out, you pour it upside down, you get a black handkerchief that's a little rock. Cuddle up. You take those little rocks, dog, you cut them up, and you take a, a number. Oh, uh, dude. And you roll it in the number <laughs> with dube, or you take that and you put it in your cigarette. You, you can just put it right outside, and you end up like that black dude that got beat up in New York. Remember? Did you see that? Man, what did I do? What did I do? He kept that. Did you see that video? No. The poor black guy a couple weeks ago got beat up for smoking a number. The cops came, and they asked him what it was, and the detective held him. And all of a sudden, you, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you see cop cars flying by, and all of a sudden, poor black guy, he, he, he didn't do nothing. Next thing he had eight cops on top of him. Oh, that dude got beat, ended up getting beat up? Yeah. What, what, what did he actually do? He smoked a joint in New York. Unbelievable, the man. The cop held him like he was a gangster, like he had killed eight kids. You thought the guy killed eight kids. The cops ran up to him like, where do these cops study? Who raised these cops? I've I've had cops in my family, dude. You know, it's just like. Listen, but, I've, I, I have cops in my family also, but there's a limit. Yeah. It's common if sense, I'm a cop dude. When I walk past you and I smell pot, I'm gonna keep walking. Keep walking. I'm like the cop in the town. Remember when they got out with the machine guns, and the cop was in the construction site, and you seen him, and he just turned his head like I didn't see nothing. That's me. Just mind your business. Yeah. It's marijuana. Whether it's legal, it's not legal. Look at your, look at your job description. See if you have time. The other day I was I was in Hollywood. What the hell was? Oh. The other day I was in Joe's Pizza. The other night I went to Joe's Pizza on the way home from I the store. I love Joe's Pizza. Hey, dude, I was at Joe's Pizza. They showed me a picture of you. You were just there, and then we went in and we got pizza too. This last week? Yeah, dude. This la- Yeah, I got the, the 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 grandma. It's the best pizza, oh dude. Oh, my God, at 12 o'clock when you're leaving the store. I can eat that. Oh, oh. I live. That's my Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> That's my Tuesday all day. I get up Tuesday morning and box. I love it, dude. So I've been I taking eat. Krav Maga, brother. Shout out to the Jews, dude. So I do that Jew fighting, dog. So I, could, I, go to, I go to boxing class on Tuesdays. That's why Tuesday's my longest day. It starts at 9, podcast in the afternoon, podcast with her at 4, then two shows on a Tuesday. Oh, my. I got to listen to her podcast. No, I don't put it up. <laughs> We just keep it on. We keep it ourselves until she gets that thing. But she's good now. She's really good now. Dude, really good. she's gold. Three pages. It's three pages. Every week it's a different animal. A couple of weeks ago we did an experiment with oxygen. We do little experiments. Oh, that's so cool, tape. man. I give her 10 bucks a week. She gets 40 a month. <laughs> She has to put She's making 20. money on pocket. That's half, more than half the people making. She has to put 20 in the bank and keep 20. 
That's great, dude. Today, yesterday, she went to the book farm and she bought her own books or whatever. She bought her own books and then she had six bucks left. And my wife was like, You want to buy any more books? I'm like, nope. I work too hard. I work too hard. Gotta save money. this cash. Yeah, so you want to buy a book for your teacher? Like, Not really. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck her. Yeah, they don't, they don't. But it's, uh, it's really weird when you have a child and you, and people don't really get it. And I don't have time. You know, people would just call me like, why can't we do lunch? Because it's just not possible, lunch. dude. We don't do lunch. We do lunch on the move. As I'm moving, I know I got to go over there. I'll eat over there. If, if I have time and I remember to call you, but when I'm moving, I don't have time for lunch. Who has time for lunch? I don't have time to meet you in Burbank for a date for lunch. I don't know what time I'll be, be hungry. I eat lunch when it's according. Yeah. I haven't eaten lunch today. I eat breakfast. I haven't eaten lunch today. When it's accordingly, when you have a when chance you got stop, a chance, you know, if you want if you want to meet me for breakfast and you have an envelope, like if there's an envelope, yeah, involved, dude, like this is a plan to make money, I'll meet you, and then you got to bring some with you. You can't just leave it at home. No you shit, bring some to the meeting with you, and I'll take the get it. My day starts. I got from nine to two thirty, and I got to write that. I got to put. I got an hour goal in there. So somewhere in there, I got to write. You figure four days. I got to do an hour, of some type of workout. I got to cry out. I got to do something. Well, there's no time. So you, I mean, you're talking writing jokes and yeah. stuff like that? So you sit down, right? Yeah, I go to the coffee shop, bring the computer and a notebook. So I'm writing the one-man show. I'm looking at the book, and I'm writing jokes at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I have a section for jokes, and I clean them out. Clean them out, put this with this. You know, I have two specials. I have two pockets of material right now. And I just borrow jokes from each hour. It's like I have two hours and I just yeah. intermingle jokes every night. I don't have a special, you know. What am I gonna do? So I got to put the CD out pretty soon. That's no, make shoot special. Shoot your own special. I'm not in the mood. And for what? <laughs> for what? What is the value of a special? Yeah, dude, I've been thinking about that too. What is the value of a special? We've kind of gotten into this arms race thing. Yeah, we've gotten out of control. It's to the point where you can't wait to shoot a special, but you know what? You're not prepared to shoot a special, okay? It's like every two years, two and a half years. This thing that these people are doing, they're doing it, and I wish them well, and I'm happy for them. I might just put out half an hour, dude. I'm going to put out a 20-minute one. Dude, there's nothing. That's what, dude, Richard Pryor put out half an hour. Half an hour. I love Rogan, but I think he's got us all like in his arms race because he works at a different level, man. And like my friend Sam Morell, he just put out a special on Comedy <coughs> Central. Nobody, he, you know, he couldn't get any offers. Comedy Central put it out for him. A million views, a million people watching. God bless that man, dude. But he, I text him like, congratulations. He's like, yeah, I know. I'm just worried about the next one. I'm like, worried about the next one? Dude, enjoy this victory, brother. That's what the problem is. We have gotten out of whack with comedy. Dude, it's just his this arms is race. Why, I got to tell you something, honest to God. I'm happy that this is going on, this pandemonium. Yeah. I'm sorry that some people have to lose their lives. Yeah. You know, I'm going to have to fly. I could risk it. I'm an older guy. I have pre existing conditions. You know, I smoked for the last 30 years. Yeah. 22 bong hits a day. But something needed to stop this thing. Slow it down, enjoy. Slow it down, enjoy. Somewhere we lost what this was all about. Somewhere. We're outlaws. We really did lose. We're outlaws. Dude, they're like, dude, if I want to, uh, I got out of uh, a comedy, I got into comedy so I didn't do nine to five. Nobody told me I was going to have a 24 seven. Yeah. No. Breathe, brother. I'm done. Like anybody who knows me knows. <laughs> I've been done for about six months. <laughs> I've been just waiting, just breathe, breathing. You know, when I tell my age, because my age don't tell me what I, like, I want to do. I tell them what I want to do. You know, I see a purpose for a lot of things, but I, I, I don't see a purpose for a lot of things in comedy. We all forgot what we got into this for. It's, it's just gotten, you know, me after I shot the Netflix special. It all fucking came to me. Everything Mitzi Shaw said to me all those nights when I used to host, all those little things she said to me, it all got clarified. And that's why I've been on that tear for the last two or two and a half years.
this, I haven't done that. I don't listen to nobody. I don't want to know what you do. This was not the way we were doing it when I moved here. Only you're doing it this way. And guess what? You're making a lot of money, but you're wrong because you're forgetting this isn't a fucking race. It's not this arms race, marathon. man. This is a marathon. Why are you doing all this right now? Uh, it's amazing. What that... happens when this slows down? What are you going to do with this And they age? have so much money, man. And it's like... What's well, enough? It's it's uh, like that guy, the, the Wolf of Wall Street. Greed is no good. Passion is good. I agree, dude. You know, I'm kind of happy, except for the debts. I'm kind of happy what this I'm with virus you, has caused. Slow it down. Slow it down. I know I'm done. I know I'm done. Stay home, watch I'm Netflix. Not, you know, look at my thing, my flyer. It's just called tour. Stop with the tours. Stop with the fucking tour. I just want to do spots. I just want to tell 56 jokes. 56 and slinging dick is over. Like, the, the, there's a couple venues I have that still have the poster up. They're still using it because the agents don't send out the new stuff and stuff like that. It's, it's, just, it's just me doing spots. And guess what? I'm going to be the best I can be. New material from the last time you saw me. I'm not going to ram a T-shirt down your throat afterwards. Do we take pictures now? I mean, I don't know what we could do anymore. Can't now. You don't want to take a picture with nobody now. I mean, who do want, who the fuck would want to take? I don't want to take a picture with a fat fuck that's in his <laughs> mid-50s that just flew five and a half hours on a plane. You're the last guy. Some lady came over to the house the other night, and while we're talking, she goes, I just went to Disneyland. I asked my wife. Right in front of her, I went and got the lights off. Right in front of her, I went and got the lights off. She's like, oh, my God, I feel so offended. I go, I'm sorry. <laughs> you went to Disneyland knowing, yeah. knowing that Why this is living in Orange County. And you work with kids. You, you're, in the, you're in the business of putting kids at risk because you wanted to go to Disneyland. I don't want to talk to nobody who's going to Disneyland right now. If, if somebody tells me I just went to a concert, out, out. I don't want you in my house. I don't want you nowhere close to me. Seriously. I don't even want to be out. You will not see me for weeks. You will not see me for weeks. I've got those dates. I'll take them if the if whatever if if you know you're allowed to. But if they're long, I doubt I'm gonna sit on a plane until we get this thing cured. Until we get something on this. I don't care if it's Chinese putting the whammy on it. I don't care if it's Iran, Japan, Cuba. Iran, Japan. It don't matter who the hell is. You won't see Uncle Joey. No, wrong with that, dude. No, you're not gonna see me. So, so you did the the when it, you did the show on the tenth at the comedy store. When is your next show? Next one is the twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. Yes, dude. Twenty four. Shady. Who knows, man? I'm trying to put together the best lineups. Nobody it doesn't matter. Uh, I don't need like to have quotas or weaponized diversity. I just want killers to kill. It's all about killing, kill, yeah, and like my. You don't have like diversity. We don't. We don't need. Diversity. I don't give a fuck. And dude, I don't do. I don't do a lot of time because it's all about just keeping the train on the track, and just letting people. You do a great show. Let the killers you do kill. A great show. Why bring in four killers if you're gonna go up there and do twenty minutes in yeah. between and yeah. the show's gonna run late? And then I gotta get in the car. Why do you think I don't do ten thirty shows? Yeah. Why do you think you can't get me to do ten? I try, show? dude. Because you're gonna go over, and then you're gonna make those people wait outside at the comedy store for thirty minutes. I don't want to get them like that. I go to a comedy club and they go run late because I ran late. That's something. But if they run late because the store, the, the staff can't cover it, I don't want my people waiting outside, especially now. Especially now with this fucking virus. So, Sam, it's a real pleasure. But dude, I love you, Joey Diaz. I appreciate uh, having you on. Sorry if I weirded everybody no, up with the Kobe shit out no, the no, gate. No. Hey, listen, man. It's what you fucking do. <laughs> Your podcast in the top 40. Yeah. Right. yeah. Whatever you're doing is working. God blessed you with two little fucking girls. Beautiful. I love them. It slowed you down, which you needed to be slowed down. Breathe. And uh, we're comedians. If there's somebody who I respect, it's you. We've been at that store since we were young kids, you know? Kids. We were kids. Kids. We didn't even know what the fuck. So, do we, and we didn't realize how good we had we it. We didn't realize it. And now we're down there and we're men. Yeah. And we realize how good we have it and we act like gentlemen. We're yeah. Real gentlemen. So it's a real pleasure, man. Thank Honor you for and taking the time out. Thank and you. And now for a word from our sponsors. All right, I want to thank Sam.
I want to thank the Christ Killer, but most importantly, I want to thank you guys for listening on this beautiful Wednesday, the 18th. I'm sorry about the situation, but it is what it is. You want the dates? I don't have them. Like I told you Monday, <laughs> refund everything. We don't know what's going on. But let me give a shout out to our sponsors. First off, Zip Recruiter. Listen, they're taking bold steps to attract new talent by raising wages and increasing benefits, and even that's not working. Hiring is getting hard. But if you have a difficult role to fill, no matter what your industry is, hire that person with Zip Recruiter. And now you can try Zip Recruiter for free. Free, free, free <coughs> at ziprecruiter.com slash church. That's ziprecruiter.com slash church. Zip Recruiter sends your job to over a hundred of the web's leading job sites, but they don't stop there. With their powerful matching technology, Zip Recruiter scans thousands of resumes to find people with the right experience for your job. And then they actively invite them to apply. You can even add screening questions to your job listing so you can filter out the candidates and focus on the best ones. ZipRecruiter is so effective that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Where are you going to find that action at? Nowhere. And right now, try ZipRecruiter for free. The church family can go to ZipRecruiter.com slash church. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash church. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. I want to thank ZipRecruiter. I want to thank CBD Lion. I want to thank Onnit. I want to thank Lee. I want to thank Sam Tripoli. But most importantly, I want to thank you savages for listening, for having my back. I'm sorry you're going through what you're going through. A couple more days, seven more days of quarantine, and you'll be out of this. We'll be back Monday morning, tip-top Magoo, ready to go. Have a blessed week. May God bless you guys. Stay healthy, and I'll be on Twitter messing around with you guys. So. Hook me up. I love you guys. Have a great weekend. Stay black.